Ever wondered what all this talk about quantitative easing and tightening is about? Well, you're not alone. These terms might sound complex, but they're simply tools used by central banks around the world to manage their economies. Let's begin by breaking down these concepts into simpler terms. Picture the economy as a giant engine, and the central banks as the mechanics. Just like how a mechanic uses different tools to fix a car, central banks use different monetary policies to keep the economy running smoothly. Among these tools are quantitative easing and tightening. Quantitative easing, often shortened to QE, is like adding fuel to the engine. When the economy is slow, central banks use QE to inject money into the economy, stimulating growth and boosting activity. They do this by buying government bonds or other financial assets from commercial banks and other financial institutions. This increases the amount of money circulating in the economy, encouraging people and businesses to borrow and spend more. On the other hand, quantitative tightening, or QT, is like applying the brakes. When the economy is overheating or growing too fast, central banks use QT to slow things down. They do this by selling off assets, effectively taking money out of the economy. This reduces the amount of money circulating, discouraging excessive borrowing and spending. Now it's important to understand that these are not the only tools central banks use to manage the economy. They also use interest rates, reserve requirements, and other tools. But QE and QT are among the most powerful and often used, especially in times of economic turbulence. These concepts might seem a bit abstract right now but don't worry, we'll delve into more details. We'll look at how exactly QE and QT work, explore their effects on the economy, and discuss their pros and cons. So, now that you have a basic understanding, let's dive into more details about each of these concepts. Stay tuned, as we take a closer look at the fascinating world of central banking and monetary policy. Quantitative easing might sound like a complicated term but it's not as tough as it sounds. Imagine your economy as a car engine. Sometimes it hums along smoothly but other times it might sputter, stall or even come to a full stop. This is where quantitative easing comes in, acting as a sort of jumpstart to get things running again. To understand how quantitative easing works, let's first look at the role of central banks. These financial institutions are like the guardians of a nation's economy. They have a toolbox of strategies and methods they can use to manage economic health. One of these tools is the ability to control the money supply. When the economy slows, central banks can choose to increase the money supply. They do this by buying government bonds and other financial assets from banks and other financial institutions. This pumps more money into the system, making it easier for businesses and individuals to borrow and spend. This increase in spending can then stimulate economic growth. But how does it affect the economy? Well, the effects can be manifold. On the positive side, it can lower interest rates, making loans cheaper for businesses and households. This can encourage spending and investment, creating a ripple effect of economic activity. It can also devalue a country's currency, making exports more competitive and attractive to foreign buyers. However, like any medicine, quantitative easing has its side effects. It can lead to inflation if not managed correctly, as the increased money supply can devalue the currency. It can also create asset bubbles if the extra money ends up in investments like real estate or stocks, driving their prices up to unsustainable levels. So basically, quantitative easing is like a shot of adrenaline to the economy. It can kickstart growth and spending, but it must be used judiciously to avoid economic side effects. Like any tool, it's not a magic cure-all, but a part of a broader strategy to keep the economic engine humming along. If quantitative easing is a shot of adrenaline, then quantitative tightening is like a calming sedative. Imagine the economy as a car engine. Just as an overheated engine can lead to breakdowns, an overheated economy can lead to financial instability. That's where quantitative tightening comes in. This is the process where central banks, like the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank in Europe, aim to cool down the economy by decreasing the money supply. Now you might be wondering how they do that. It's a bit like selling off assets. Remember how, in quantitative easing, central banks bought government bonds and other securities to pump more money into the economy? Well, in quantitative tightening, they do the exact opposite. They sell those securities back into the market. This reduces the amount of money circulating in the economy, thereby increasing interest rates. But why would we want to increase interest rates? Isn't that bad for borrowers? Well, yes and no. While it does make borrowing more expensive, it also encourages saving. This is because higher interest rates mean you get more return on your savings. The effects of quantitative tightening are felt in various ways. 
for one, it can help keep inflation in check. When there's too much money chasing too few goods, prices tend to rise. By reducing the money supply, quantitative tightening can help prevent this. Furthermore, it can help stabilize the economy. An economy that's running too hot can lead to financial bubbles and subsequent crashes. Think of the dot-com bubble in the late 90s or the housing bubble in the late 2000s. By cooling down the economy, quantitative tightening can help prevent such bubbles from forming in the first place. However, it's a delicate balancing act. If central banks tighten too much, they could stifle economic growth and potentially trigger a recession. That's why they need to carefully monitor the economy and adjust their policies accordingly. So you see, quantitative tightening is the opposite of easing, it's used to cool down an economy that's running too hot. You're probably wondering what all this means for you and the economy as a whole, right? Well both quantitative easing and tightening can have significant impacts on our day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with quantitative easing. When a central bank injects money into the economy, it often leads to lower interest rates. Now that might sound like a good thing if you're looking to borrow money for a house or a car, and indeed it can be. Lower interest rates make borrowing cheaper, stimulating spending and investment which can help to boost the economy. However, there's a flip side. Too much money chasing too few goods can lead to inflation, meaning the price of everyday items can go up. And if inflation gets too high, it can actually erode the value of your money. Imagine going to the store and finding out that the price of milk has doubled overnight. That's the power of inflation. Now let's talk about quantitative tightening. This is when a central bank takes money out of the economy, which can lead to higher interest rates. Higher interest rates mean borrowing becomes more expensive, which can slow down spending and investment. This can be a good thing if the economy is overheating and inflation is getting out of control. On the other hand, if the economy is struggling, higher interest rates can make things worse, potentially leading to increased unemployment. So, how does this affect you personally? Well, if you're a saver, Higher interest rates could mean more return on your savings. But if you're a borrower, it could make your loans more expensive. If you're a worker, it could affect your job security depending on how the economy reacts. In the grand scheme of things, these actions taken by central banks are aimed at maintaining a balance in the economy. They're like the thermostat in your house, turning the heat up or down to keep the temperature just right. So, as you can see, these tools have a significant impact on our everyday lives. Now that you have a better understanding of these concepts, let's recap what we've learned. Firstly, we delved into the concept of quantitative easing. This is a monetary policy where a central bank increases the money supply in the economy. It does this by purchasing government bonds or other financial assets. The goal? To stimulate the economy, particularly in times of economic downturn. It's like adding fuel to a fire, providing the economy with the extra energy it needs to heat up and grow. We also learned that quantitative easing can have a significant impact on interest rates. By pumping more money into the economy, it pushes down the cost of borrowing, making it cheaper for businesses and individuals to take out loans. This encourages spending and investment, which can help to boost economic growth. Next, we turned our attention to quantitative tightening. This is essentially the reverse of quantitative easing. Instead of increasing the money supply, a central bank decreases it by selling off its financial assets. The aim here is to cool down the economy when it's overheating. It's like taking some logs off a too hot fire, helping to prevent it from flaring out of control. Quantitative tightening also has a significant impact on interest rates. By pulling money out of the economy, it pushes up the cost of borrowing. This makes it more expensive for businesses and individuals to take out loans, which can dampen spending and investment, slowing down economic growth. Finally, we explored how both quantitative easing and tightening can influence inflation and unemployment. By manipulating the money supply, central banks can help to control price levels and keep unemployment in check. They're powerful tools in the toolbox of monetary policy, and understanding how they work can give you a new perspective on the economic world around you. And that's a wrap. You are now more knowledgeable about quantitative easing and tightening. Remember, Understanding these economic concepts can help you make informed financial decisions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.